Hello, welcome to Lunch with Laura. I am Laura Lee Collet from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I hope to show you some tips, tricks, and things that'll make your stamping more fun. What could be more fun? But anyway, maybe this will help and uh, get you to really get into some more difficult situations that maybe is outside your comfort zone. So, um, I was going to show you something today and I'll save that for next week. But I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Summer is rapidly approaching here in South Louisiana. And um, happy Father's Day to all those guys out there in your life. Let's move on. Today, let me turn you around. And show you what we're going to be doing today. Let me make sure my camera is right. I've got my host code up here if you ever need me want to add um, suggestions. I would welcome that if you have something that you are interested in me showing, like a technique, uh, please, you are always welcome. I'm gonna put this down just a little bit more. There we go. I'm always welcome and I love to learn new things and teach new things. So here is our June host code. But you can reach me at 2bobet at gmail.com or my website is www.stampinatthebirdnest.com. I made these two cards for today and wanted to show you some little tricks using this stamp set. We, I'm using flowers of friendship and there is a punch that matches it and with this you can do all sorts of great things with this stamp set before we get into that I want to talk a little bit about something I showed you on one of my videos before and wanted to remind you how much easier it makes life when you have the cling stamps. The, let's see, when you go to put your cling stamps together, the, you can always find the um, sentiment saying, take the backs off, and try to match it up this way. But the easier way is to, let's see which one do I have here. Um, from this new year, okay. This set is a wish for everything. I just wanted to find something that I hadn't put everything together. So um, this one is right here. And what you're gonna do is peel the whole thing off and place it on your block, like so. Then I have the matching stamp and I'm gonna pull that off and pull off the covers on the decal. That's probably the hardest part. Let's see. Oh, come on. Here it comes. You might need tweezers or something sometimes when you can't bend it. All right. Now, what I'm going to do, can you see the outline of the sticker? That's what I'm using to match up with the outline of the stamp. 
Now, do I sometimes make a mistake and it doesn't come out just right? Of course, but for the most part, it is a much easier way to mount your sentiments onto the words on your clear, your cling stamps. So, I wanted to remind you of that because with this card and the stamp set, you have a large flower, a small flower, a small leaf, and a little leaf. Well, let's take a look at the stamp. Wouldn't it be great if you could cut this all out at once instead of having to waste paper or, you know, slide in little pieces just to punch the leaves? And I'm gonna show you how to do this. I wish my brain thought like this, but it doesn't. So I saw this on Julie Davidson. She's another uh, Stampin' Up! demonstrator on her site. And she, what she did was simply amazing and it can be used with any uh, punches that come like this. I pulled another punch and we're gonna check out the sweet ice cream punch too. So what I'm gonna do, this is how they're gonna be lined up, but I want you to see how you do this. So I'm gonna take my flowers and leaves off and I'm going the first thing you're going to do is to take a piece of your contraband cardstock. Don't use your good basic white. You're going to stick it in and punch it. And I've already done that. And I wrote face up so that I know what it look what it's going to do when it's put together. It doesn't make a difference with the two flowers, but with the two leaves it does. So now I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to take my big flower. Now, also, come back here, I wanted to let you know that you might need to just snip a little of the rubber off to get them close enough. And I'm going to put that in so that it's this way. Oh, I need it upside down, Donna. And I'm kind of feeling for that, how you can feel where it has been cut. And if my fingers will quit sticking, that'll help. All right, I'm gonna put the next little flower in there. See how they're gonna butt up against each other? The little leaf is gonna go right here. and the larger leaf on this side. Okay, so it was kind of like we did when we put together the stamp I just showed you. Now I'm gonna take my block and they'll stick to it. Now, after this, you wanna put the face up side of your template over your flowers to see that everything is where it should be. And I'm going to see if I can move this. I may need to snip a little of that off, but I move that up just a little. Okay, that's better. And then this leaf needs to go over a little bit. So like I said, you may want to just snip a little piece right here and here to make it. In fact, let me turn this around because I had done it on that side. See where I snipped out the little pieces? Now let me see if that works better. Yes. Okay, it looks like everything's lined up. So. Let's get started with our card, and we're going to come back to this in just a minute. Okay. So we have the stamps that we're using is Friendship of Flowers with the punch. And I'm also 
just got these in. They're called scalloped contours. Y'all, this is one of the most, the one of the greatest sets they could have come out with. You have this large scallop you can do. You could even use that. That's six inches. You could use that on a scrapbook page. Each one of the dies is a little bit different. The one we're going to be using is the second one, the second largest, and it's got a little beading around it. This one has a little stitching. This one has just lines, and this one has the little dots. Then it comes with a, two flowers, and this one has leaves. So there is a stamp set that goes with this. However, I had something similar, and I didn't get the stamp set. So I just bought the dies. So that's the one that we I'm using. Along with, we've got our words, happy day. This is another great uh, die set. It's called Word Wishes, and it has 12 different sentiments. Now, I like to, as well as outlining, so I know if I'm missing one, I also like to put what the word is because it's kind of sometimes they're hard to read. And then it has all the holidays too, which I like. So it can be used year round. So the ones I'm using are the, the Happy Day. Put that back. The colors I use, y'all are gonna, I know you're gonna laugh when I tell you this. I did a workshop Saturday and one of the girls said that she wanted a 4th of July card. And I'm thinking, okay, I know what colors I can use. Then I started looking and at the moment, we don't have anything current that we can use for 4th of July. And I always try to use current stuff when I'm having my classes so that I don't frustrate anybody by saying, oops, that one's retired. So I came up with Happy Day. That could be used for a lot of different things. You could, uh, it could be a birthday, a holiday, whatever. So I decided, okay, Happy Day, that's 4th of July. We always love to celebrate that. And then I started thinking, okay, red, white, blue. Well, the blue I am choosing is called Coast, Coastal Cabana. And I've cut this at five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. The layered piece is Melon Mambo. This was my red, and it's cut at four by five and a quarter. And then I used Shimmery White. This is in, you can find this where the card stocks are listed, the whites, the vanillas, all of those. This one has a little shine to it. I'm not sure you're able to see it, but it's awesome to use at, um, comes 10 sheets to a pack. So you wouldn't want to use this except for special things, or that's what I do. And then, then you're gonna need a piece of basic white to stamp your flowers on. Now, as you can see, I have already cut out a few of these so we wouldn't have to um, work with the stamp, and, uh, the emboss and cut machine today. So let's see, I'm going to take my bone folder, give this a nice crease. Then we're also using another punch, which I use a lot, and I think it's just wonderful. Uh, Detail Trio, it has the rounded corner, then it has a little decorative thing, and then you can even uh, do a little hole if you wanted to put a tag, put some ribbon through it, it's big enough. And what I started off with was the rounded corner. 
and I went ahead and punched all four sides. It will go through the, the double with the um, card folded. Hello. <clears throat> Let me. There you go. I'm having a little trouble with my shoulder today. I, I don't know. I did a wrong move in Pio this morning. Okay. Now, we have that rounded. And we want to be sure that we've got our card facing the correct way. Next, I'm going to round the corners on... And if you don't like the way, stick it back in and do it again. Okay, so all of that is rounded. Now, I wanted to add the little decorative touch. On some cards I made yesterday, I uh, got too slap happy with the... Uh, uh, stamp and seal and forgot to do it and I'd already put it down on the card when I realized it. So, I, I happen to like this one. I just think it, it gives just, it's such a fancy little flower that I think it's real cute with the extra little touch there. Now, if you don't have this punch, you can always order it or you can substitute what you have. And there we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put these. Oh, and see our little pile of things there? I know we save everything, but I'm not going to save that. I'm going to put my stamp and seal on this. I've found that sometimes if you if it's not running for you, if you'll go over a place that has sticky already, it it'll pull it out. That's another little tip for you. And I did think that up myself. Okay. So now I've got that on there. And I went ahead and cut this out with the number, t the second from the largest of the scalloped contours. And I'm gonna pop this up. Um, using my extra pieces around the edge, you don't wanna throw those away. So be sure that you, and you can tell which side is the right side because it's rough on the back. take those off and put it it may cover up the holes and you know what that's okay I still like the way it looks so that is done the next thing we need to do is to put our happy day on there and a couple of little paper I don't know I know there's a word for that but the little cutouts didn't come out, so I'm just gonna use my little take your pick tool and get those out. And then I'm going to take my liquid glue. And you can see that I use the upper left-hand side of the card. And I'm not gonna try to get this everywhere, I'm just going to put it on the widest parts and put that down. And I wanted it to hang off a little bit. And here's the day. Well, now that it's really getting hot, I hope y'all are staying inside and making lots of cards. And better than that, I hope you're mailing some. I was looking at my, um, I've made so many cards lately and I really need to get on the ball and send more out than just my birthdays.
and my get wells. Okay, now that's there. And now we're gonna go ahead and stamp our flowers. What I'd like to do is be able to slide this across like here, this instead of coming here, because that means I would have to cut off and slide down and cut off. So I'm gonna do it so that I've got my flowers that'll be punched like so. I'm using the Memento Tuxedo Black, and I'm gonna make sure that my flowers are inked up real well and that my big flower is on top. And I'm gonna stamp it three times. Oops, didn't ink it well enough. Let me go back. This may be my older pad that hadn't been re-inked recently. Let me get my other one. Okay, so I've got, that one's not a total loss, but I'm gonna go ahead and do three more, or two more. So one, two, up. Three, and I'm going to do this one again on the other side. Remember, if you make a mistake, just turn that paper over because you can use the other side and it won't show through. Well, I don't know what I'm doing today. I have some others cut out and we'll, I'll just use those. Okay, some days are like that. Now, I colored mine with blends. Of course, I wanted to use the Coastal Cabana and guess what? We don't have a set of blends in Coastal Cabana. So I went to the next closest and it's the Bermuda Bay. So I'm gonna color in some of the flowers with Bermuda Bay. And I'm actually gonna use the smaller end. And I'm, use, I'm using the light and I'm gonna come back with the dark. And for the center, I'll use Daffodil Delight and it's dark. So let's do another one of these. And let's see, I'm gonna do this one. Even though it messed up a little bit, it won't show, I don't think. These squeak, can you hear them squeak? All right. Now I'm gonna use color some that are in Melon Mambo. And again, I'm using the light and I'll come back on those with the dark ones. Let's try the big end this time. It works good on the uh, big flowers. It's certainly a lot quicker. Okay. It's looking okay. Let's see how it does on the, the little ones. It does okay. You just have to be very careful. Try not to get outside the lines. Oops, this was the one that smeared. Well, anyway, you'll get the general idea. Let's do another large one. And what I did was I came back with the darker one and you can do a little blending down close to the center of the flower 
So let me show you how I did that. Now I like, I keep pulling the big ends. I like the little ones the best. So I just went in and went over those and kind of got a little bit around the center. Just to give it a little bit of depth there. Same thing on this one. And this one I did a little bit different. I kind of outlined that little rim around it. I know Tracy's probably saying, nope, that's not the way you do it. But that's the way I did it. So again, I'm going over the, the little veins that are showing and around. Last one, last but not least. Now I'm going to take my daffodil, my daffodil delight, and I'm going to color in the center. Now you could always use an embellishment here if you chose to do that. And then I'm going to use Old Olive Light and Dark Blends for the leaves. And you don't have to use all of them. You can use, you know, just a few, just to throw in another little color there. I'll do another couple, then we'll be ready to punch. And with the dark, I just kind of went over the little vein and the leaf. Now, let's see how we did with our setting up our stamp. I'm going to punch this bottom one since that one's there. Oops. Okay. So there's that one. When you go to put your uh, paper in, squeeze just lightly, just enough to hold it in the spot you want it to be. And just don't get in a hurry, just try to get it where you want it. And I'm more concerned with the flowers. Let's see, I think I moved that. Okay, and let's see how that came out. That's pretty good. And the leaves, and where's the, the little one? Okay, he could have been a little more centered. Let's see how these come out. But I just thought this was a stroke of genius to have it set up so that you could punch them all at the same time. Let's see if I can do that little leaf a little bit better. Okay. And where did that baby leaf go? Is it still in there? Okay, let's see if I've got enough. Again, I'm going to use dimensionals for the flowers. And I've got them right here. Let's see. Try to use up these bits and pieces I have. 
there's a small flower and a larger one. Let's see how, how we're doing here. Let's put this one up there. I don't want to blot my little decorative piece there. And I'm going to do a blue one next. Oops. There we go. And if they are over the edge, that's perfectly fine. You do it the way you want to do it. I'm going to put another one. Now I'm coming a little bit more this way, but that's me. You're free to do what you like. So I'm going to stick one here. And let me see, did I have a... There's another little one. And another blue one, and I'll put those down like that. to get out some of the mini blue dots so that I can put these on the leaves. This definitely works better. And I just randomly placed them. Like I said, it's you have them, you can use them or not. It's just up to you but I just kind of sprinkled some around. And see where, uh, if you tuck the leaf under there, all that white doesn't show. I think they um, came out pretty well, let's see. Here's another small one. And I'm gonna tuck it right up here. Okay, so you can add more less, more flowers, whatever. This is yours. Do with it as you please. Don't forget the Wink Stella. Now remember, this is that shimmery paper, so I'm going to make sure that the flowers have a little shimmer on them. Don't know if you can see this. I'll hold it up and but there is a little gleam on there and I'm just putting it on the petals I love this stuff and sometimes I forget about it so that's going to finish up our, today's project but I do want to show you one other thing before I let you go. Okay, can you see the gleam, the little shiny parts on the flowers and on the paper? I'm not sure it's picking it up, but it's there. And I know the recipient of the card will be truly amazed. Now, going back to the templates, I just wanted to show you that the sweet ice cream also has two pieces with its punch. And I turned it upside down, made a template, and now I'm gonna turn it over. If I can find where I put my, well, we might not do that. Anyway, wherever I put the two stamps for safekeeping until I got to them. The blue people have taken them. The blue people are the ones that move things when you know you have put them in certain places. And let me look again. Nope. Well, anyway, my point is that if I had the two stamps, I would do the same thing. Turn them upside down Stick, well, you need a little bit bigger block. Stick it to the block, turn it over, turn your template over, match it so that it's in the correct spot, 
Then when you go to stamp, you'll know you can cut them out both at the same time. Okay? So, that winds up today's show. I enjoyed you being with me today. Please come back next week where I'll show you some more tips and techniques. And I hope you have a great weekend. Honor those fathers, grandfathers, brothers, uncles, cousins, everybody um, that is a father in your life. And have a wonderful weekend. I hope that the storm doesn't come our way with all the rain. We shall see about that. And I love you. Come back next week, 12 noon, Central Standard Time, and I'll see you then. Bye.